Hey y'all, Coaching and Fight here, talking about the return of the Messiah and the 120th Jubilee cycle. Now, I just received a bit of information from one of the viewers named Sharon related to the Epistle of the Apostles and how it talks about the timing of the return of the Lord. And so we want to come down in and we want to look at what this actually says, because I believe this is a major part of the puzzle that we're working on. And that is the whole day of the Lord scenario that we read about in Revelation chapter six and the sixth seal. Now, if you've been around our channel, you know that we have been working on this puzzle for a while now. As the father has been revealing to us the prophecies of Daniel and John and Hermas and Nicodemus and Barnabas and Enoch. We can go on and on how many different elements to this puzzle there are. But here recently in the past month or so, our father has really been keeping our focus on these prophecies and when they are actually supposed to take place. I believe it has something to do with that whole thief in the night thing that we hear about when it comes to the return of the Lord or the day of the Lord. Back during the days of Hanukkah in 2020, I actually had a dream or a night vision in which I was laying in the bed working on my computer, which I don't normally do. But in this dream, for some reason, I was in the bed working in the YouTube studio. In other words, I was working with the videos and things that we have posted on YouTube in this dream when I heard a sound coming from the other room. And when I went into the other room, I saw an individual climbing out of a window. To me, what that dream meant was that the, somehow I was going to catch that thief in the night. And I believe that is why our father has been pressing on my heart to understand these prophecies and the timing of them and how they relate to the day of the Lord. But anyway, I want to keep this video straight and to the point. So I'm just going to jump over here to the book called The Epistle of the Apostles. Now, I found this over at a website called earlychristianwritings.com forward slash apostolorum.html. But let's jump down and let's look at this particular verse right here as it's talking about the timing of the return of Christ. Now, if I've read this book, it's been several years ago, so I'm not that familiar with it now. And this appears to be coming out of chapter one, but I need you to see this part right here where I was talking about the Coptic manuscript and how part of it was lost because this is what I believe is talking about down here in verse 17, when it's talking about the soul copt or something like that, I believe it's referring to the Coptic manuscript. But anyway, we're gonna start right here at verse 17, which this is the, the apostles talking to the father. And they said unto him, Lord, after how many years shall this come to pass. Now, what they are asking the Messiah is about what he was talking about in verse 16, where he says, Verily I say unto you, I shall come like the sun when it is risen, and my brightness shall be seven times the brightness thereof. So he is clearly talking about his second coming or the second advent of Christ. He says, the wings of the clouds shall bear me in brightness and the sign of the cross shall go before me and I shall come upon the earth to judge the quick and the dead. So anybody who is actually familiar with the return of Christ would recognize in these verses that that's exactly what he's talking about. Remember that verse that says every eye shall see him. Well, it's because his brightness will be seven times the brightness of the sun when he returns. But anyway, what we want to focus in on is like we said in verse 17, because the apostles, just like in chapter 24 of the book of Matthew, chapter 13 of the book of Mark and chapter 21 of the book of Luke, they want to know when is this day going to transpire? 
Whereas in those gospels, he gave them a hint. But in this one, he's been a little bit more forward when he said unto them, when the hundredth part and the twentieth part is fulfilled between the Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then shall the coming of my father be. So, wow, that's actually telling us when he plans to return. All we just need to do is unpack some of these time stamps that he's talking about, particularly this one that says the 120th part. This, I believe he's talking about the 120th Jubilee and that his second coming will be after the 120th Jubilee cycle has ended sometime between the Feast of Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But now let's come back to the 120th Jubilee as we run off on this tangent right here about the Feast of Pentecost and Unleavened Bread. So this would be one translation right here, which it says between Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But then when you look down in the so-called Coptic, it says in the days of the Feast of Passover and Pentecost. Now, it's only a slight difference in the wording there, understanding that many times the word Passover is used interchangeably with unleavened bread. So it's just said in the days of the feast of Passover and Pentecost. But now down here in this other translation, it says between unleavened bread and Pentecost shall be the coming of my father. So it's a little bit reversed there and it looks a little bit strange because we know that unleavened bread actually falls about 50 days before Pentecost, which means that if you start in Pentecost, you will go around the calendar around 300 days before you get back to unleavened bread. So was he saying between Pentecost and unleavened bread or did he mean between unleavened bread and Pentecost? I'm not really sure, but I did want to just bring that point out. But now let's go back and let's focus on what I think is truly amazing here in this verse is how he's talking about this 120th Jubilee. When he says the 100th part and the 20th part fulfilled. So when is this 120th Jubilee? Now, there is a book called Jubilees that tells us the history of the Jubilees. It was a book written by Moses along the time when he was writing Genesis and Exodus and all of those books. It covers the same stories, at least up until the Exodus, with the exception that it gives the timing of the Jubilees. And when you look in the last chapter of the book of Jubilees in verse four, you see the last known scriptural account of a Jubilee. Now, they may have continued doing Jubilees after this verse and what we see in this verse. But this is actually the last time it was written down. In other words, if you look in all of scripture and try to find out when was a Jubilee year in history, the book of Jubilees, chapter 50 and verse four is going to be the last time it was recorded. And what we see is that when they crossed the River Jordan was a Jubilee year that we see is actually the 50th Jubilee. So we can use that bit of information to understand when the 120th Jubilee is. Now, we've talked about this before in classes that we've done on Jubilee years, one in which we went in and we proved these dates. But in this one, we just want to briefly discuss them as we show when the 120th Jubilee year is. So we understand that they crossed the River Jordan during the 50th Jubilee, but that we know to be 157 B.C. And like I said, I proved that in those other classes. It took a lot of time and I don't want to do so in this one. So after this video, go in and watch that other class we did on the 120th Jubilee. But anyway, so starting in 1457 BC as the 50th Jubilee 
and we count 30 jubilees ahead, we see that the Christ was actually born in the 80th jubilee. Now, of course, that 80th jubilee cycle would have started in 13 AD and the first advent was in 26 AD. So what we understand is that he was born before the 80th jubilee but his first advent was actually in the 80th Jubilee cycle. That 80th Jubilee cycle would have ended in about 60 AD. Now, if we step forward another 40 Jubilees to get to the 120th Jubilee cycle, we see that it started in the year 1974. So 1974 would have been the beginning of the 120th Jubilee cycle. Well, that would make the end of the 120th Jubilee cycle the year 2022. So now those parts of verse 17 out of the epistle of the apostles become more important. Whereas talking about between Passover and Pentecost, or between Pentecost and Passover. Sure, nobody knows the day or the hour, but this is definitely telling us the year and the month of the second advent. So now this is all new to me, and I do need to study this a little bit more to figure out exactly when this is talking about. But I just wanted to share this information with you guys. You see, as a result of this collaborative effort, this information was brought to me at all. Well, I'm sure some of you guys will go in and you'll start trying to figure this out on your own. And whatever you come up with, please leave it down in the comment section as we continue to try to put this puzzle together. If you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But just be sure to leave us a comment either way. And Shalom.